technology and just understanding technology. The reason we do that is that we're a learning centre for our own members and for the public, so we like to do these sorts of things to keep people informed and brush up on, on our own skills as well. It gives us a bit of a uh, impetus to do things and look into things, uh, pass that knowledge on. Um, to our own members as well, that's what we do all the time at our meetings about new technology so that uh, our own members then take an interest, a hobby interest in that um, and that includes hardware as well as software including electronics, robotics, you name it, anything to do with technology. And the whole objective of that as far as we're concerned is to uh, try and push technology on the Gold Coast and we talk to various government uh, agencies at various levels, including notably the uh, libraries and the council, um, to try and push technology on the Gold Coast and make the economy a little bit broader than what it currently is, which is what a lot of the council are particularly interested in trying to do. So as a result of that, we have all this stuff that we're continually playing around with, and um, so this afternoon I'm going to show you a little bit of that. I'll just start with this and then I'll explain what the significance of it is. That thing there is called the Raspberry Pi. It's a computer, it's a complete computer, the whole thing. That's it. The motherboard, the storage doesn't have a hard disk, instead you put this little card in, this little one SD card, you've got an SD card, similar sort of thing to what you might put in your camera. These, I didn't bring one, but these can plug into a little USB device that plugs into the USB port. Okay. Right? So what can you that sort of thing? Um, they're called card readers, USB card readers. Okay. So that's considered to be a card. There are various different formats of these things. Thank you. This one here, just as a put the glasses on and be able to read it, tell you, there's 16 gigabytes. And you can now buy them at much more than that, like 64 and I think 128 gigabytes. And you'll be able to get them terabyte, guaranteed within five years it will happen. So just to give you an idea, um, the power in that computer, the Raspberry Pi, is probably pretty much the same as everything they had to go to the moon and back. It's got about that sort of power, we're getting close to it. The next thing up that's slightly more powerful is a lot of people's mobile phones. They've got very similar technology in them in a way. They've still got a, a processor of some sort, the brain, they've got memory, they've got storage. And you know how you had hard disks and PCs? Well, that's the new hard disk. You don't have a spin The reason in why I show you that. these in particular is that these were invented about nearly 10 years ago now, about 8 years ago. They've taken about 8 years in the making and they only got released last year. They're made in England um, and they're a brainchild of a guy I think from Cambridge Uni, Cambridge Oxford, I think it's Cambridge. And the objective is that every school child in England will be given one. Mm -hmm. The reason they're doing that is that what happened in computing since about 19... 7580, when the IBM PC came along and Microsoft came along with Windows and what have you, was that there's been 30 years of consumerism basically, where we've got to a point now where so many young people know how to fire these things up and just use them, but there's a great shortage of people that really understand how they work. So this is a back to basics type thing. Um, along similar concepts to the old um, home computer clubs of the 80s. To try and, and on there are some programming languages based on the latest programming language effectively, a thing called Python, you've probably never heard of it, but it's a really good programming language. But you can load other programming languages on it too, because it's just a basic computer. Now, we use them all around the world now, grab them, don't go to school obviously, but fire them up and use them as simple little computers just for fun, because the whole thing costs $35. <laughs> right? 
So that's where you've got to now. So I'll just unplug it again. So that's that's a. I've actually there's a bit of cable in there because I've actually got a little camera in there. It's a very high definition camera. When I start it up, I'll show you that it's an extremely high definition camera. In there. What, what do you call the that? camera itself, Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you want to know anything on the about anything I talk about. Yeah. Right, you turn it down and Google it. Google is, Google is the latest god. Yeah, you typically these days for any of this technology, you go online and get it off. Um, in this case, a company called RS Online is one of them. And another one called Adam 14. But basically, yeah, they're the two distributors out of, out of England, and there's a couple of other places here in Australia now. We also sell them through Gold Coast Tech Space, actually. The present. Yeah. I'll show you how it works, but it's yeah. it's a little bit low power for a general purpose computer. Yeah. Very, very slightly. We've tried, and it's just a little bit slow, but it's close. And I've got a USB hub here, so it gets some extra ports. So I've got that there that connects to my mouse. I've got that there connecting to the USB keyboard. Plug that in from the Wi-Fi, and there's my connectivity to the great wide world sort of thing. So you have to carry all those around anyway. That's, that's a ten dollar item. That there costs about eight or nine. Keyboard's ten. Mouse is about seven. So the whole lot really the cost is how big a monitor you have. Okay? Yeah now that that brings me to the next one which is the slightly more powerful one that you can use as a desktop top computer. And that is hidden behind here, and it's running, and it's there. <laughs> That's it there. It's called an Odroid. That one cost ninety dollars, <laughs> but it's a quad processor, which means it's got four CPUs in it. So it's four times as typically four times as fast as PCs used to be. Most PCs now have dual and quad core processors, which means they're actually in one tiny chip, there are actually four CPUs all multitasking. All you need to do is start up some sort of device, doesn't matter what it is. It could be a smartphone or a one of them, a tablet, an iPad, they're all tablets. Or the TV slash computer. Now, everything we discussed at the start of today info of interest, news, email, banking, Google Plus, shopping, pictures and videos, and communicating through Facebook and Twitter everyone was focused on the internet. Five years ago, you wouldn't have been doing that. You're all talking about how to run Word and how to run Excel, spreadsheets on your PC, how to fight viruses, how to keep continually upgrade the things and what have you. Those days are very much gone. And for 30 years people have battled with Microsoft Windows and PCs and paid through the nose for upgrades continually and downloaded software all the time and had to install it, had to configure it. Those days are totally gone. All of these things, the software for these, also comes off the internet. There's one thing that you missed on all of this in a way, because you don't care about it anymore, and that is the software that makes you able to do all that. And you don't care about it anymore, simply because, generally speaking, there is only one significant piece of software that you're going to run anymore, and it's called the web browser. 